Welcome back, you guys. We're now going to be tackling example 10, which is another proof, which we're super excited because we love doing proofs. Okay, so um, again, I have a good feeling we're going to somehow incorporate the HL theorem because this is in the HL theorem section. So probably HL will appear. Uh, but if you guys notice, this time we are not proving triangles are congruent. Like in the last one we did, we proved two triangles were congruent by the HL theorem. Okay, this time it does not say anything about proving triangles are congruent. So that's always a good hint that the CPCTC thing is gonna pop up. So just be on the lookout. Don't forget though, in order to use the CPCTC theorem, um, you have to first show that triangles are congruent because then all of their corresponding parts have to be congruent. And again, I have a feeling we are gonna show that these two triangles are congruent by the HL theorem, but I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let's see where the wind takes us. All right, let's start with our given. So we are given that AD bisects BC at point P. We also know that BA is perpendicular to AP. And we know that DC is perpendicular to PD. And then we also know that, um, let's see here. I think I left off one thing. Hold on, you guys. Yep, I did. Gee, will it curse this long. I forgot to include the final given, which the final given says that BA is congruent to DC. Sorry, guys. The demon cat's got me. Ha. Huh. So I also know that BA is congruent to DC. And all of that is because of the given. So this should be included in your given. I apologize. Be mad at me. Uh, but anyway, so the only thing that I can really mark congruent as of right now in my picture is the fact that BA is congruent to DC. So I'm gonna mark that in my picture real quickly. So I know that BA is congruent to DC because it was given to me. All right, now remember you guys, if you can ever grab things from the given, that's always helpful when you're trying to prove things are congruent or show anything else in your proof. So do you guys spot anything that might help me to write an additional line in my proof? <gasps> I see it too, you guys. We think like just alike. Okay, so do you guys see that AD bisects BC? So if you go back to that nifty notes packet I gave you a while back when we started doing proofs, I gave you what it means to be a segment bisector. So flip in that pack and read to me what does it mean to be a segment bisector? Correct, you guys. It does mean that if something bisects something. So this is AD is bisecting BC. So if a segment is bisecting another segment. What that means is it slices it in half. It's pretty violent. It slices it in half and creates two congruent segments. Okay, so by that, I know that BP is congruent to PC because that is what it means to be a segment bisector. Now, be careful. AD is doing the bisecting, not BC. So AD bisects BC. That's why these two pieces are congruent. Since AD is doing the bisecting, that doesn't mean I can assume anything about AP and PD. So just be careful. Okay, so I now know that BP is congruent to PC because that's what it means to be a segment bisector. So my reason would be definition of a segment bisector. Definition of a segment bisector. Okay, well let's keep going. So I have some things marked in my picture as congruent. Okay, now let's see if there's anything else in the given that might help me write another line on this proof. I don't know. Let's see. <gasps> I see it. Do you guys see it? Do you spot the word perpendicular? <gasps> All right, so I'm going to use perpendicular to help me write another line. So again, since you already have that nifty notes packet out, flip to what it means to be perpendicular. 
Yes, precisely, you guys. You guys are so bright. Okay, so if two things are perpendicular, what that means is they intersect and form a 90 degree angle. Okay, so when BA and AP intersect, since they're perpendicular, they will form a 90 degree angle. So I know that angle A is a right angle. I'm actually gonna wait for a second. I also know that DC is perpendicular to PD. So what does that mean about the angle that forms when DC intersects PD? It means that it also will make a 90 degree angle because that's what it means to be perpendicular. So I can say angle A and angle D are a right angle. And the only reason why I know that is because it told me they are perpendicular. Remember, just because your picture looks like it's a right angle doesn't mean that it's a right angle. So watch yourself. It does look like it's right, but the only reason why I can say it's right is because it told me it was right. So just because it looks like a right angle, it smells right, like a right angle, it kind of, you know, if you pet it, it kind of feels like a right angle. That doesn't mean it's a right angle. So watch yourself. Don't assume things or the demon cats will get you. So watch out. Okay, so I know that angle A and angle D are right because that's what it means to per be perpendicular. So this would be definition of perpendicular. Okay, so again, in order for me to show that additional parts in my triangle are congruent, I must first show that these two triangles are congruent. Okay? So, if I'm going to be using the HL theorem, which I don't know, I just have a good hint that we're using the HL theorem. I don't know. We'll have to see. In order to use the HL theorem, I must first establish that these two triangles are, in fact, right triangles, which, looking at these two triangles, what do you guys think? Do you think they're right triangles? Holy hot dog, they are, you guys, because they have a 90-degree angle. So, guess what, you guys? I can potentially use the HL theorem, which is super exciting. Okay, so now I'm going to declare that these two triangles are right triangles. So I'm going to say triangle um, BAP, which I could have just used the triangle symbol, but whatever. All right, so triangle BAP and triangle, I'm going to use the triangle symbol because I want to be lazy now. So triangle BAP and PDC are right triangles. And how I know that is because that's what it means to be a right triangle. So it'd be definition of a right triangle. <gasps> oh man, you guys, now that we know that they're right triangles, I might be able to show they are congruent by the HL theorem. So in order to show that two triangles are congruent by the HL theorem, I must show that two right triangles have legs and a hypotenuse that are congruent. <gasps> which, let's see here, I have two sides. Let's figure out which sides of the right triangles these are. Okay, well, B, A, and D, C, they are on the sides of the right angle. So which side of my right triangle are those two sides? <gasps> they are the legs. So I'm going to write legs. Legs. So I have a leg, so now what's missing? If I'm trying to show they're congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem, what else do I need? I need a hypotenuse. So let's see, these two sides are directly across from my 90 degree angle. So what do you guys think? Are these the hypotenuse, or I don't know what the plural is for hypotenuse, but is this the hypotenuse of each of my triangles? Yes, in fact it is. So I have, shown that each of my hypotenuses, or whatever it is, um, are congruent in my two triangles. So, hypoten, hypot, well, the demon cats are just getting me real bad, you guys. Sorry, I cannot spell today. Hypotenuse. And then I also have another hypotenuse. There we go. So, since I have shown that the hypotenuse and leg are congruent between two right triangles, guess what, you guys? My two triangles are congruent now by the HL theorem. Yay! So, I'm going to say triangle uh, BAP 
is congruent to triangle which BAP if I trace it I have one tick mark zero tick marks two tick marks so one zero two so I need a one zero two in my other triangle so that would be triangle CDP I got one zero two okay so CDP and they are congruent by the HL theorem yay now normally you guys I would be done with my problem but I am not done if you guys look back here, I am trying to prove that angle B is congruent to angle C. Well, now that I know my two triangles are congruent, now I know that all three angles and all three sides are congruent between my two triangles. So guess what, you guys? If my two triangles are congruent, that would have to mean that angle B and C are now congruent because they are corresponding angles in these two triangles. Okay, so I can now say that angle B is congruent to angle C, and since this is after triangles have been proven congruent, the reason after triangles are proven congruent is always C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So I now know that angle B and C have to be congruent because my two triangles were proven congruent by the HL theorem. Oh man, that was an intense proof. And that was so exciting, you guys. I'm going to draw two happy faces because that problem pretty much made my life and made my day today. So nice job, you guys. Keep up the good work.